Saturday the 3rd of September 2016 saw the Furness Abbey Fellowship's fourth annual medieval fair at Furness Abbey in Barron Furness, Cumbria. The Furness Abbey Fellowship is a charity set up in 2012 to support the work of English Heritage in raising awareness both locally and nationally of this beautiful building. The Fellowship organises various fundraising events and activities throughout the year, but the medieval fair is the major event. After three previous successful events, 2016 was going to be another marvellous occasion. We were looking forward to many heritage craft demonstrations and craft stalls, a falconry display, magical alchemy experiments, living history displays and reenactments, a medieval jester, medieval monks doing their medieval thing, food and drink galore. But the British weather decided to play its part and forecasts of rain and wind proved correct on the day. However, many visitors still brave the elements to enjoy the many memorable activities on offer. I was able to speak to some of them as they enjoyed the day. So, what's your name? Solomon. So Solomon, you're here on a wet day at Furness Abbey. Do you like this place? Yeah. What's special about it? The ruins. You've been before? Yeah. It's really fun. Right. And we had a lot of jumping. I came with Bella. You had a lot of what? Jumping. So. It's, it's like a playground, only with respect, isn't it, this? It's got yeah. wonderful things to walk on and see. So how old do you think this place is? Can you have a guess? Mm, quite old. Quite old. Are we talking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds? I think we are, aren't we? Yeah. So who's come dressed up today? Are you dressed up? Yeah. Who have you come as? Um, uh, has he come as a character? Have we got the wrong end of the stick yeah, here? No, he's a merry man. Are you? Well, where is Robin Hood? I'm Robin Hood. Now, <laughs> tell me, who is Robin Hood? Do you know Robin Hood? Yeah. Who is it? My mummy. Right. Is she? Does she always dress up on the weekend? Robin Hood, you've come. Have you come specially today to support the Furnace Abbey Fellowship? We have. We love coming here. We live in Witherslack. Which is just up the road yes, away. Yes. Yeah. But we're from Kirby and Furnace originally, so. Right. So you're Furnace. Us you were a Furnace. Right. There was slate in Kirby, wasn't there? Oh, it's burning in slate forest. Is that why we got rich and famous? Because Barrow was built on slate and iron ore, wasn't We're it? We're still yeah? famous. Yeah, we are. <laughs> Burlington slate's very famous all around the world. It isn't is. It? So, yeah. is this one of your favourite places in the area? We we joined English Heritage um, last year, and we, my daughter said we've been two or three times in the year, and we feel it's got a wonderful atmosphere. So you can just pop in and. And we've got a lady, a fine lady dressed in sort of period. Mm. So what's your name? I'm Millie. And you've come especially dressed up today, Millie? Yeah, I came last year dressed up. It was a bit drier then, but right. it's still fun. Do people ask for photographs and selfies with you? No, but I get a lot of compliments when I dress at change up. How are you managing to stay dry in this weather? Uh, an umbrella. All <laughs> oh, right, okay, but it, it, you get wet from the feet up in this weather, don't you? Yeah, I've got my wellies on there. So, so. did you choose your own costume, or did you have um, some help from Robin Hood? <laughs> it was my friend's costume that right. I, it, I borrow. So if you've done this more than once, you must have enjoyed it the first time you did it. Yeah, it's, it's great. So, do you do drama by any chance at school? Are you interested in music uh, and performing? I do, I have done. I, yeah, I went, I've performed on stage four times at our local theatre right. and um, I was on the radio with school Were you? and I've been in the Gazette So you're not twice. shy? Who yeah. did your lovely face paint make up? And you, you uh, the face painter down They've made twig pencils and they've written the names with quilling stamping yeah. What's the quiet one called? <laughs> Hello, what's your name? What's your name? India. India? And you've got a face full of cake at the minute, is that right? Is it good cake? Yes. Are you enjoying your visit to Furnace Abbey even though it's raining wet through? What animal have you been painted as or is it just decoration? I can see it now. Yes, a butterfly, a beautiful butterfly. Um, we went to the Stock Park Bottom Mill with English Heritage. Now, I wanted to go there and I haven't made it yet. Has it got something to do with the cotton industry? Yeah. What did we you went. Learn? We went on a day where they were having all the machines running mm -hmm. and it was really interesting seeing... All. So what did they make? Uh, they made bobbins to go with the string. In, um, on the, in, for the factories? Yeah. Right. Would yeah, you recommend okay. me to go? 
Yeah. Shall I pick a day, a day's better weather to go in there? Yeah, I think it was raining when we oh. went, so we just stayed in the indoor bit. So you're having uh, cake and drinks here. What are you going to do for the rest of the afternoon? Or have you finished? We have might, you done everything that you needs to be done? might go doing? modern technology and go to the cinema. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. yes. What have you got lined up? Which film do you think you'd like to see? Well, Spies and Amazons. That's brand new, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So your name, we never asked you your name, what's your name? Joss, yeah. And this gentleman with you is a very important person because what's his position in life at the um, moment? The Mayor of the, Dalton. The Mayor of Dalton. Good morning, sir. Welcome morning. to Furnace Abbey on a wet day. <laughs> this fine. is your parish, really, isn't it? This is ancient um, capital of Furnace. It's the everything. ancient capital of Furnace, that's right. And yeah. you are, uh, this year, the, the leader of that ancient capital. How fond are, yeah. you, how fond of you, are you of Furnace Abbey? Uh, very. We, as a family, we actually come down here quite often. Right. Um, on on Sundays usually, and just relax and wander. Chill out. To be honest, we have a wander around. Yeah, we do. We do come down here quite often, and uh, this event's just fantastic. Yeah. Um, weather aside, mm. brilliant. Um, there's there's all sorts going on. Um, we've been right down to the bottom, and they've got an alchemist and 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 brother John. Right. What um, does an alchemist do, young man? What does an alchemist do? Um, what did the alchemist do? The alchemist, um, he turned this. <laughs> oh, he does magic with metal. Coin and then turn it to gold. Right. And has it gone back to copper? No. Oh. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> <It's too laughs> a lot of effort's gone into putting these events on, hasn't it? Yeah. Who else was down there? Yeah. Brother John. Yeah. And what was he doing? Natural remedies, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, so if you were ill, you didn't go to the chemist, you no. went to the local herbs and. and yeah. Yeah. yeah? Leech is optional. So have you been treated this good. morning for any serious illnesses? <laughs> <laughs> Not, no, I managed to get away with that. Um, but really interesting, really fantastic. I think it's a fantastic effort. Shame about the weather. Yeah. But hopefully it won't put people off too much. But if we go back to the formation of the Abbey, it was Dalton that was the ancient capital. So It was in Dalton. The, the Abbot and, and the Lord of the Castle would be like thick as thieves, wouldn't they, back in the day, I would imagine. <laughs> They'll be friends. Wheeling oh. and dealing. Yeah. Well, I yeah. don't know about that so much, but uh, um, but yeah, they, they would have had a connection. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. Connection. vibrant place, Dalton. Lots going on. Yeah, I think so. I, I, well, I like to think so. Yeah. Um, I, I do know that there is a lot going on in the community now. Yeah, I was appointed on the, in May yep. this year, and my my mayorship goes to May next year. Right. How long have you been in local politics? Is that something that's always a few? Um, it's about. Fifteen years as a town councillor, right. and um, last year I was deputy mayor. This year I'm mayor, and after I'm stopped being the mayor, I'll still be a town councillor. Anyway, here we are at Furness Abbey in the pouring rain in the Women's Institute tent, and three very lovely ladies are going to introduce themselves. It was only a rehearsal before. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I, I am with Pat Moore. Margaret Ward. Margaret Gibson. And you've come to support the Furnace Abbey Fellowship in the medieval yeah. fair, but yeah. we've not been blessed with weather, have we? No, no, I definitely haven't. You've obviously come because you think this is a special place. Is it a special place? Oh, yes, mm. definitely. And, and do the people of Barrow appreciate it enough? Not now, I don't think they do. I think they did in, in days gone by, yes, in our childhood. So what's the difference? Why do did why did young people... Is it our fault? I think no. Want, I think they need entertaining think, now. Yes. And that they're not unless they're really interested in the history to actually come and look around they want to go to a theme park or they want to go mm. yeah yeah and parents are also working don't whereas we used to bring our children we used to walk around here with the prams and, and come in perhaps bring a picnic and, and um, in days gone by so that was when you made your own fun didn't you in That's those right. days oh, yeah. Yeah. do you not think though that with the, the walkway that comes through from Yarlside area that right. they're bringing that back a little that is brilliant yeah, well, I, do, I do that I every well week yeah, absolutely I do that yeah, every week because yeah, it's, yeah. it's child friendly it's disabled friendly yes. it's a really nice and show. the cafe too yes. yeah. who, who do you bring when you do that my Just husband <laughs> <laughs> can you not grab local <laughs> children and bring visitors. them well, visitors we yes. Yes. you see yes, families oh, yes. coming you know and kids on bikes mm. and that's great yeah, and scooters and, and yeah. push chairs can come round and yeah. then they come to the cafe and have an ice cream. Bar. So the town of Barron Furnace, with this beautiful thing oh, in its borough, yeah. has it done enough, do you think, over the years to promote and to care for? I mean, I know English Heritage look after it, yes. but we could be bigging it up a little bit, couldn't we? Yeah, yeah we could, but, but we've just heard this morning that um, 
there's no signs coming along the A590 to direct us here. Right. And apparently you've got to have what the pattern... 100,000 visitors a year before you can have the signs put up on the motorway. So we've been told this so morning. So people are not aware. Well, it just seems <laughs> ridiculous. So really what I've got to do is come every day, flash my card and come in yeah. and, and yeah. do 100,000 visits That's a year. Right, exactly. You were telling me something yesterday about the fairies garden. Oh, the fairies. When you yeah, were a child, you yeah. came here. I came here. We came here as a child regularly, mm -hmm. but also into the um, field over the line, over the railway line, which used to cross in where this bow bridge, and that was called the Fairy Glen. Did you now, see any? Oh yes, I did because I believed in fairies. But if you don't <laughs> believe in fairies, of course you won't see them. <laughs> I still see fairies. <laughs> do you think? Do you think this place might be haunted? If you believe in anything like that. Well, it probably is. <laughs> well, <laughs> we were it told as children. Yeah. Um, um, we came, was it two years ago now, mm. last year? Mm. We came to a centenary function of WI here. And I have read some of Jill Jepson's books. Mm. And in the books there is Magpie yeah. features in the book. Mm. And as she was talking, I looked through and there was a magpie mm and I could not believe that there was this magpie. So it's like the fairies, you see, it was real. And that it was, was really real. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so, yes. Yeah, and I think it's your imagination as well as, as children, you know, you always think things are spooky and such like. But I can remember coming to the mystery plays here, that was right. absolutely amazing. They had more than one mystery play, oh, yes. didn't they? Yes, they did, they they did yes. yes. Two yes. or three. Mm. Ian Bird and David Marcus yes. and people, yeah. On Just the top right and the schools top. took yes. part, didn't they? Elizabeth yes, they did, Dennis, yes. do you remember yes. when we were at the grammar school? Elizabeth Dennis took the, a part in the mystery plays, didn't oh, she? I think so, yes. Mm. That's a memory so. that stays with you when you do oh, something yes. like that because yeah. 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 as a barrel lad that moved to Preston, I've been involved in Preston Guilds. Oh, oh yes. Yes. Um, And that's a once every 20 year thing. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're involved in something as a youngster, mm. I mean, yeah, I, was, yeah. as I was a grown up and it meant a lot to me, but the yeah. children that were doing it, it was it was a memory for life. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yes. So unfortunately, yes. Furness Abbey isn't creating memories for life as much as it used no, to, is it? No, probably not. No. What can it's we do? A different to world. It has to be preserved. People have to start to mm. look at the heritage, and perhaps they're not interested in history the way we were. I don't know. I think we're at a disadvantage simply because Barrow is at mm. a disadvantage, being yeah. at the end of the peninsula. Mm. Yes. So people are not passing through. No. Mm. You've got to come, story. haven't you? You've got yeah. to come you've got to be, yeah. 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 So you've got to sell the town. Whereas at least in the old days, they did pass through because they came on steamers yeah. from Heesham. Oh, yeah, that's and true. And Fleetwood, yeah. didn't yeah. they? Yeah. Perhaps when we get the... Um, and, and to join with the railway. The, oh, my the God. <laughs> that one in our <laughs> Tell me your yeah. thoughts about the Abbey Tavern, that lovely but derelict... Oh, well, that's a, it's, it's just crying out, isn't it, to be taken over and linked to the Abbey for visitors. Shall we have a raffle? <laughs> rich, <laughs> or do you know any rich millionaires? Yeah, well, I <laughs> wish. Oh, yes, <laughs> yeah. No, I mean we used to come a lot for meals there. Yes, really, it was really nice. Very nice. Yes, you yeah. asked about the amphitheatre too. I mean, it was always the place we made for for egg rolling at Easter yes. and for sledging. Mm. Sledging. Yeah. Yeah. Sledging. That yeah. still happens though, don't it? The sledging. Yes, but people yes. don't so much do the, the egg rolling, rolling yeah. do they? No, no, but the well, sledging. That's chocolate they do, Easter yes. eggs have done yes. away with yes. yeah. that, haven't they? Um, so it's a wet day at Furnace Abbey. But you've got a particularly special link with the Abbey because you may have something in your garden that... What makes you think that? Well, it's only an old wall um, across the garden which is holding the, the field in at the back, which isn't very far from the Abbey anyway. Mm. Um, I don't know what's in there, but if you'd like to come and have a look, you're more than welcome to. Does it look to. quite as monastic and as though it's built the, of our stone? There are the odd stones. There's a lot of different sorts of stones as well as, but there is the odd stone that you might mm. find useful. So I think it was quite common, wasn't it, that when this place was dissolved, it was just a free, a free for all. A free, free for all. Mm. I think so. <laughs> but uh, it, I mean, it's not far away from the abbey. It's just over there. Yeah. So it makes sense, doesn't it? Yes. You're bound to yeah. have something. It could be something, but you're more than welcome to well, go and have a look. This is one thing that the Furness Abbey Fellowship wants to do to Probably find to bits of this beautiful north. place. <laughs> In, in the community <laughs> and, and log it down on a special map so we know where they are. Right. <laughs> Thank right. you very much. You're we'll be round. <laughs> yeah. And I, I'm going to have to introduce myself while I'm recording. My name's Gary. 
from the Furnace Abbey Fellowship, and you are a dignitary, sir. You are from Ulverston. It's very nice. They've invited the, uh, several mayors, and I'm pleased to see, even though it's a bit of a wet day, the mayors have come. So you've come from Ulverston. You're Mayor of Ulverston. That's right. And your name is, sir? Mark Wilson. And you've come to a place that you actually love. Do you love this I place? I do love this place. How uh, long have you loved it? Oh, uh, how old am I? <laughs> I've been here 30 years. I love it. We were just remarking that once when we were in Ireland, um, we went round the west coast of Ireland and we suddenly turned round one cove and then there was a mini Furnace Abbey. <laughs> they got everywhere though. They did. Books, didn't they? But how did they get everywhere? Well, they On were. funny tiny little pokey boats. Yes, they were hardy people, weren't they? They were. So, Ulverston is the next town after Dalton, so Dalton has the closest links with the Abbey. Mm -hmm. But Ulverston is equally ancient, isn't it? Uh, probably not quite as old. Although there are some parts. I mean, we go to a church called Pennington Church, mm -hmm. and there, well, without telling too many secrets, okay. there are some <laughs> ro evidence of Roman remains there. Right. And we used to have, although uh, everyone went a bit prurient in about 2005 and sent the Freya Stone to Kendall Museum. Right. And that was a Roman yes. uh, idea. <laughs> So has Ulverston got a buzz about it lately? I'll hand over to the <laughs> Mayoress of Ulverston. <laughs> when I drive past the Coronation Hall, as I do regularly, come and see my mum who's still in Barrow, there's always a raft of events on that poster outside the Coro. So are you actively involved in everything that goes on? It seems you are. It feels like it at the <laughs> moment, because we're Mayor and Mayoress for a year. But cor it's very exciting about the Coronation Hall because it's just been taken over ah. by the people of Ulverston under an organisation called... Ulverston Community Enterprises right. and they're going to be running Coronation Hall and the market so yes there is a real buzz about Ulverston at the moment. So it is a well used venue is it? A very well used venue. It's always been legendary people going to the Coro. Yes I've yeah. seen Midjour there yeah. and that was a fantastic concert and lots of lovely classical music concerts mm. and Manchester Camerata are regular visitors there. So is Ulverston the Lyle town with a big heart? Is it that is. what we've seen on the posters? It is, absolutely. And the yeah. festival town of course because we have lots of festivals there. Yeah and the recent, the most recent festival is the, the comedy one that Paul Merton came a couple of years ago. That's right. Is, was that successful this year? They're all successful because people come from all over the country yeah. but especially for the Dickensian festival. Of course. I think that's the a, Christmas one. You get thousands and thousands of people yeah. in there. So, so are you busy most days with functions well I do work full time oh. but yes how do, you, how do you find time I don't know <laughs> there's evenings and weekend functions like this one but yeah. it's absolutely delightful to come and I, I love Furness Abbey very much yeah so mm. we, uh, did you come here as a child or? well my mother was from Dalton right. so when I was growing up she used to tell me about Furness Abbey mm. and I've actually got pictures of when my mother and father were courting they had lots of photographs taken well, here it, so do you know people should be coming to do that nowadays shouldn't they but I've been shocked that only 11,000 visitors come here because I think it's wonderful yeah. and I think so many people come to the Lake District and I think we really need to get the publicity out there and get more and so more people coming here. Well, we'll be happy to see more footfall. Or do we want to keep it as our secret? We don't really, do we? We, we want don't to want to keep it. it as a secret, no. no. We want people to come and enjoy what we enjoy all the time, mm. share our lovely experience. And enjoy the history. Absolutely. And touch the sandstone, which Absolutely. is millions of years old. I mean, old. I find that mind-blowing when well, I think of the monks. And the I've just been talking to Brother John. Oh, have you? Yes. I must go down and, and see he him. He said how marvellous it was because people around here the farms the monks educated they fed when they were when they were poorly they were looked after by brother john mm. from the abbey and it's just amazing really yeah. well mm. good luck with the rest mm. of the year because Thank there's you. most of it left isn't there really yes. you did you take office in did you take office it's in may? may till may mm. so you've got all the it's very season. very busy now from sort of now till christmas yeah well good luck mm. thank, thank you, you very much There's a Jester. Hello, Jester. We need Hello. a good laugh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've met a lot of WI and they always good for a laugh. Where did you spend the night? You didn't spend the night in the grounds, did you? I did, you? indeed. Oh, what's it like to spend the night in yeah, Furnace Abbey? It was brilliant. It was great. Did you see any ghosts? Or I didn't see any ghosts at all. I saw a couple of security men. <laughs> <laughs> so you, uh, were you in a tent in the grounds? Yes. And, but it's rained. No, it wasn't raining. It wasn't raining, no. Yeah. And it's brilliant because um, we got the tent down. And then it started raining almost straight off. Oh, <laughs> right. So you were ready. You, at least your tent's dry for going home. The tent's dry for going home. But yeah. yeah. Right. Is this your first visit to Furnace Abbey? It is. And it's so a impressions, really, please. It's a really good abbey. It's nice and big and it's got lots of bits of building to it. And you, 
whilst you can't tell everything without a bit of a tour to know where everything is, you, you can get the outline of where it is. Right, yeah. And they were all built to a plan, I suppose, weren't they? Yeah. So yes. you're impressed with our Abbey? I like your Abbey, yes. You're not impressed with our weather, though, are you? <laughs> well, would anyone be at the moment? No. It does rain in Milton Keys. It does, time. but if you come to the Lake District, you kind of expect a bit yeah. of water, don't you? Yeah. Right. So tell me about the life of a jester, yourself as a travelling entertainer. <laughs> uh, um... <laughs> Are you practicing skills which jesters would have used back in the in the medieval times? Absolutely, and and to so, be fair, much further back than that as well. Right. So, now, if you really want to know the history, we of do okay. because jesting must be thousands of years. Well, old. I mean, the the every single Listen and look, look and learn. Yeah. Yeah. Jesting. So 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 to start with, I mean, the the first recorded sort of juggling um, is every single society that has ever had pictorial records really uh, apart from the cavemen um, have got pictures of jesters so we know that they were in the Egyptians they were with the Incas and the Aztecs they were the Chinese they were all over the world often ladies oh, and so if you if you look at the Egyptian tombs it's it's the ladies of the jugglers I think we've got three jesters here oh, yeah, quite <laughs> <possible. laughs> Pat, Margaret and Margaret <laughs> okay. um, so, so, so juggling is the one we know about has been gone longest, uh, but I've got a lot of other skills that I do. Um, and some of them have been around. I, this, this, which just looks like a fancy stick, which is called a devil stick. This, this comes from Africa, and it's a bit about 6,000 years old. Yeah. And then I've got a Diablo, which comes... No, over, they're the ones the with devil. strings, aren't yeah. they? They are. They're, you um, you now, bounce your... Yeah. Now, you say the devil, uh, but the name of this is actually... Um, um, it was developed by the French about a hundred years ago. So the actual name is something in Chinese, which I can't pronounce. Right. Um, uh, but the these people will know that. That's the way the, they, well, yeah, between the, the two sticks, two, the and, two the sticks string. and the string. You throw it up in the air oh, and, and sometimes right. catch it again. And it hits you on the head. <laughs> yes, yeah, that sort of thing. Yes. And people laugh, which is what you want. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, and this is 1,500 years old as a skill. Wow. Um, and there was something that came before that, which I have got somewhere in one of my bags. Um, which is a one-sided thing, um, and the, the Chinese Diablos originally, if I can find one for There's you. a great big bag of tricks here, a basket full of equipment and a bag of tricks. Yes. Yeah. Hello. 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 We're learning about jesting. Hello. Jesting? Yes. We're talking to the jester. This is an old Chinese style di Diablo, which is very different from the modern European style one. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, so the original Chinese Diablos, um, were made out of bamboo rather than the plastic I've got here but they had the holes in them like that and and those holes when you get it spinning it makes a horrible eerie whiz wee oh, sound right? Right. Uh, quite loud one um, and originally before they had the two-sided they had a one-sided and they had a more of a spike on the other end and like a spinning top <laughs> were jesters in the pay of rich people or were they independent just traveling oh uh, yes and yes yes and yes <laughs> okay. yeah you one of these people who ask questions which is at all and it, it's it, it's like this um, jesters were traveling entertainers right and they were paid um by the wealthy um particularly they would go and visit the wealthy at points but the biggest part of their their job w was to go around gather information to pass on news from village ah, to village right. and gain information from other courts for the people who were paying Spies. them well yes, yes maybe yeah. but, well, but it's, it's, a picture of what yeah. was happening across yeah. the and area. let everybody else know what was happening as well mm -hmm. because we didn't have any fast way of uh, traveling around the fastest thing was was people with horses mm -hmm. and most people wouldn't move more than five miles from their own villages. So they didn't know what was happening in the world. So they needed people who were travelling to tell them what was happening. And you had the troubadours and the jesters were the people who passed it on from, from town to town, village to village. All right. And everywhere they went, they do their job. They get paid often in food rather than in money. Yeah, survival. And also you'd have the show, so you'd have all the different things. So you could appeal to every group. The, the, that, well, they didn't really have children in those days. Children is a modern invention. Yes, well, yeah, they were adults yeah. by the time they yeah, were ten, weren't they? Well, yeah. you either were too yeah. you either oh, too yeah. young to do something, or you were working. Yeah, there, yeah. There, there were two options. Yeah. You, you didn't really have children. We've managed to get one of the quiet ones to speak to us. Is it is it Bella? Right. You see, nodding isn't very good when you're recording audio, is it, Bella? Let's see the sound of your voice. Can you say hello? Hello. 
Right. Well, she's there. What have you done? What activities have you done? Um, what have you done here today? I got a glitter tattoo. A glitter tattoo. I bet the monks back in the day had loads of glitter oh, tattoos. Look at that. What? What is it? What design is it? Uh, it's an octopus. An octopus, right? But what things have you done that are perhaps a little more traditional and more um, old-fashioned? Can you think? Somebody will whisper in well, your ear for you to say. Well, we did some feather painting and stamping. Right. And you were crushing up stone to do that, weren't you? Yeah. Using stone. And then we were using oak galls to do your quill oh, pen writing. Oh, the old fashioned like, writing. Who was the person that was leading this, was it? Oh, it was in one of the arches. Was it, the, was it a monk? <laughs> yeah, have you seen Brother John down there as well? A, no, I think you saw a gesture, didn't you? So, the octopus is your favourite thing, isn't it, really? The glitter tattoo. Yeah. And you quite like making a pencil. Somebody made a pencil. Right. Yeah. And what was the, what? What do you do with a quill? You mentioned a quill. Was that old-fashioned writing? Uh, yeah. And you had to dip it into messy ink. Yeah. Did you do that? Did you dip into messy ink? What was, you, you what was your quill? Yeah. What was your quill? How do you make what a quill? Uh, we made it out of bamboo sticks. Right, that's very clever, isn't it? Right, but what about the hey, feathers? Not, she's trying to feed herself at the meantime. <laughs> what about a feather? Um, we not... went and did a feather pen too. So you can cut the end off, can you, and make that into... So we didn't have typewriters and computers and typing back in the day. We used to write things like that. No. No. Don't know how lucky we are, really, do we? Thank you, Bella. Do you want to put that food in your mouth? Yeah. Off you go. Go on, let's... I'm just wondering, uh, to a lot of people, Furnace Abbey might mean more than just the Abbey grounds in here. So it's when you go the whole the valley. Um, the beauty of the yeah, valley the and the amphitheatre. Yeah. This came up, perhaps, in that recent uh, planning yeah. and, uh, application to of build the houses, the houses. And, yeah. and the opposition because of, it would damage the uh, lovely approach. It's a glorious entrance which uh, everyone so comes to yeah. actually. Isn't so it? they were going to build a housing estate on one side of it. So mm. fortunately that's is that squad as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. 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 But, so you came to the mystery place? You'll find something uh, yeah. 1965. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> a, a little memory of it. It's uh, memories going that far back uh, somewhat uh, yeah. we came to the eighty eight one. <laughs> was that Peter Duncan? Yes. Who was Blue Peter was he? He was. Right. He then went on to be Chief Scout. He what? Yes, that's right. You're, into, you're, you're, a, you're a guiding person. So, did that get rained off a little bit like today? I seem to um, I don't know if that was the following. Well, they, yeah. had the, they had the, fir- the mystery plays, but then they had the Sonny Lumiere. I think that was that the following year where they did things as well. Yes. And I think that yeah. was when, because the mystery plays you walked round, mm. and the following, the other one had big seating here. And that was, they did it every other night, yeah. I seem to remember, so that if it was raining one night, the ticket that you had for that night would then be re- all right for the next night. So in terms of sort of National Abbey history, how important is Furnace Abbey? Yeah. You know, if you, if you look across the country, is this one of the best? Uh, I think it's supposed to be the second biggest institution in England. Uh, I don't know about Scotland. But it's just here on our doorstep. Yes. But have you heard of the Arts Council um, survey that they did? And they tried to work out which area of the country was the best in certain things. So they they, they looked at things like see it, can you? They, they looked at things like historical um, make it. things yeah. and um, nature places and all sorts of things like that. Barrow actually came top, right? Um, well, because of its mixture of the the natural environment and the built environment and the historical environment. Is it's what you make. I, I never visited yeah. Peel Island, which is connected to this, until I was. Over 30 or 40. And that that, well, I, shame, eh? It is. You know, because as a that's child, that's another gem. It. It's, it's unique, isn't it, almost, Peel yeah. Island? Do you think English Heritage should be doing more with this? Should more people be coming, or do we want to keep it as our little secret? Well, no. We don't want to really, do we? No, I you think could people be need to know about money it. investing in developing things, could you? I have suggested they have bike racks. We yeah. come on our bike. Now, these rude people are saying that the Mayor of Barrow and her husband get planning permission for the yes, building of this. Did. did you? Yes, I did. You have a fond <laughs> memories of it. So, Anita, Absolutely. you're here at Furnace Abbey on the medieval fair. Is this place close to your heart? Very much so. Very much so. I think it is um, a very important 
part of the town for well for the borough area for the furnace area and for Cumbria really so yes, from childhood, absolutely. childhood memories absolutely, absolutely. yes yes right. definitely you're not that old though are you no 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 not as old as Colin I do. is this the one that was giving you a stick yes a yes ago? the amphitheatre for getting false teeth and it's part of being a kid in Barrow isn't it absolutely yes what did you yes. used to do as a child there Slightly. we used to roll eggs yeah. down yeah. and uh, we used to when it was snow like it's annoying we used to get bits of Wood and plastic, and we used to yeah. anything you could slide down. Yeah. So, what yeah. have you done here today? Have you had well, face we... painting? No, you haven't. No, had no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's naughty, this one. Is yeah. he your deputy mayor? They don't mayor? do air <laughs> Is he your deputy mayor? <laughs> you, no, he's my consort. Right, well, yeah, sack him. <laughs> so, well, he is. He's just been sat. Well, we've been round to, to have a look at the different stall. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. We, we went to see the birds of prey. Um, absolutely beautiful, and we've been to chat with the alchemist and right. and uh, the monk in there. It's absolutely amazing. Does it give us the secret of eternal life? Um, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> but we can change silver to gold now. Yeah, but yeah, it's lovely. I was here last year actually. Yeah. It was lovely. I mean, it was. It's a shame about the weather, isn't it? But it's still nice to see a lot of people have turned out today, and yeah. obviously, I think the rain's stopping now, so. And now you you've admitted to sliding down the amphitheatre on bits of plastic sheets and everybody's going to come and have a look at the site. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, please do. <laughs> you've been listening to some of the visitors and participants in the fourth Furness Abbey Fellowship Medieval Fair at Furness Abbey on the 3rd of September 2016. As the afternoon progressed, the rain persisted and the winds grew stronger and by this time bedraggled members of the Iron Shepherd's Living History Group had spent several hours in the rain dressed in period costume. The Iron Shepherds have long supported the Furness Abbey Fellowship Medieval Fair and today had set up a camp recreating medieval life and demonstrating crafts such as wood turning, net making and cooking. The Iron Shepherds also present an exciting weapons display but unfortunately weather conditions forced its cancellation today. I had a chance to chat to Iron Shepherd's leader Stuart Appley who was turning wood on a pole lathe. But the increasingly bad weather meant that chatting and recording became well nigh impossible. So let's make a cunning plan to meet again soon with Stuart for the full story of the Iron Shepherds and the wonderful historical reenactment experience they offer across the northwest of England. That will be in your next podcast from Furness Abbey and the Furness Abbey Fellowship, keeping you up to date with events that are going on to preserve and promote this beautiful abbey. We didn't need a Noah's Ark, but we may well put one on the list for next year. Join us for the next Furness Abbey Fellowship Medieval Fair, the 2nd of September 2017. Sun Cream Essential. <laughs>